What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Code Peterson tutorial. More GB Studio this evening, and we're doing kind of an extension of the past few tutorials I've done. We've learned how to keep track of inventory and even how to display the inventory and set it up to where in our game we can have a shop for our character to purchase in game items at. Well, we're going to extend it a little bit further this time, and we're going to create an inventory menu. So it's more visual instead of just using text. This will allow you to have more inventory items to keep track of. And we're gonna use this with a little bit of tile swapping, but now how we've done it in our previous tutorials, there's a new way to do this in GB Studio where we can just add an event and we can replace a tile out location. So I'm pretty excited to show you that also. Without anything else, Getting in our way, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, just to show you how my program is, or how my game is set up, I created a little game here called Inventory 2. And when I go into my assets in here, I did add some sprites. So I have like my little character, I have a little heart icon, I have a little health icon, and a little music icon. Those other ones are all default ones that are in there. And you can use any you know, items you want to use. These are just items that I'm going to pick up that I want my inventory system to keep track of for this demonstration. Now for the backgrounds, I added my little level and I have like what is going to be my inventory screen. The tiles for my inventory screen, they're little squares with numbers in there. And those are eight by eight tiles that I just created with tiled. And you just have to use that because if you're going to do tile swapping, your tile, your background tiles are 8x8. So these have to be 8x8 also. Uh, finally, and I don't know if this will change with GB Studio, but I did have to, in this assets folder, inside the folder that it contains my game information, I had to create a folder called tile sets, all lowercase, all one word. If I click on that, you can see that is where I have my tile sheet that I'm going to replace those numbers from my menu. Those little squares with the menu or with the numbers are going to be replaced with these three icons. I don't know if they'll eventually fix that because it is kind of weird to me that you would have to add that folder in there. But at this point in time, you have to do that. And it's still, I think, a lot easier than when we used to have to enter in the little script and make sure the code was all correctly. in. Uh, looking at it in here, I have my level one. I named my other background as inventory menu. And again, up here, game world, that's what that is. Sprites, you can see that I have my health. I have the heart. I have the music. And then I have my little square character that I have set as moving four directions plus movement. And that's gonna be the character that I move around the screen and have pick up items. Then if I go up here, it doesn't say backgrounds on here. I have to find where it says images. And then that is where my inventory screen and my, my level background are. All right, back to the game world. The first thing that I want to do is I want to have it to where my character, when is on the screen and I press return, I go into this little inventory menu, essentially pausing my game. All right. The easy way to do that is to begin with, I will add event with my level one selected and I'll search for button and I'll find attach script to button and I'll choose start which will be the enter or return key on my keyboard. Or if you're testing this on a game, it'll be your start button. And then I want it to override default button actions. Then I'll add an event. And I will use change scene, which is going to take me down to this inventory menu. And then I want to be able to press return to go back to level one. So I'm going to select inventory menu. 
and I don't want my image sprite to be showing up on this screen. I want it to be a menu without my character. So item number one would be add event and deactivate actor. Attach button to script. Start. And add event. Change scene. And this will take me back to level one. To play. And we will try this out. We're moving our character around. When I press return, I'm at my menu. Then I can go back to my other level here. Now, a few issues with this, you can see when we go back into this level, it moves my character up here into this area where there's a solid border around the outside. So that, that causes me a problem. I want this character to end up where it was before I left the screen in the first place. Easy way to do that is by going back up here to level one. And then here where it says on press, I will add an event. And I want to find store actor position in variables. And then I'm going to click that little code and I'm going to bring it one spot up by clicking and dragging it. So it's right above the change scene to inventory menu at zero comma zero. Now in here, I have a X value and a Y value. So I'll click this drop down menu and I want to find global variable. I'll just find one of my global variables in there. I'll just start with global variable zero. And then my other one I will use will be global variable one. Then I will click the little pencil and I will name this first one player X, just all lowercase, all one word. And this second one I will call player Y, all lowercase, all one word. That shows us press this button and it's going to store where our character was when we came here. Now, if I go back down here to inventory two, we'll notice where it says, you know, we want to change the scene to level one. Well, I could click this drop down little pound sign menu here and find variable. And I'll do the same thing for the other one. And then I can find player X and player Y. Now by running my code, I have my character here. I'll press return. I'm in the menu. I return back and my character is where I was when I left it on there. Pretty slick. Okay, the pause menu works. We're able to go back and forth. That works perfect. Awesome. The next thing that I want to do is place icons in here that I can pick up. That I will add an actor. And I'll bring this one up here. And I don't remember which, I'll just kind of go in order on here. So the first one I had was a heart. So with this up here, I'll click this and then I will find my heart that I had uploaded to my project. And then I'll add another actor over here. And the second one on my tile sheet there was the music notes. And then finally, I will add one more actor. And then this one will, of course, be the health. That's all three of those items that are in here. Now, you could set this up a, a bunch of different ways. I'm just going to have the example that I'm giving you. When I pick one of these up, it'll show in a particular spot in this menu. In here. We will start with the heart. So with the heart selected, I have a collision group and it's a collision group of none. I'm going to switch it to collision group one. If your game, you already have a collision group one assigned for like your enemies or something else, you can use any of those other three or any of those three collision groups for whatever works for you. I don't have anything assigned in mind, so I'll just use one because it'll be easy for me to remember. So collision group one, and it gives me this on hit option when on hit with the player. Then I want to search for variable set to true. And it asks me what variable I want. I'll click this drop down menu. And I have a variable 
2. I will select that and I'll click the little pencil here. And again, this is a global variable because I wanted to keep track of this variable between level one and when I go over to inventory. So all the variables I'm using for this demonstration are global variables for this for this demonstration today. Uh, I will name this one as heart var, the short for heart variable. All right, so heart var is set to true. And then I want to add another event. And I want to search for deactivate actor. And I will click save. Now, if I go and select my level one on here, then I want to go on in it and I want to search add event. And I will say if variable is true, and I'll click the drop down menu and I will find my health var. Then I am going to deactivate actor and I'm going to deactivate that part. That way, once I pick it up, if I go to my menu and I go back, the heart doesn't respawn. Now, you may not want that to happen in your game. You know, that's, that's fine. Let's check and make sure that that point works right now. Pick up the heart, press return. I'm pausing. I go back and the heart is still gone. Okay, so far, so good. Now, the next part of this is I want this heart to be represented in this little square. Now, this is pretty cool. Uh, I will go to my inventory menu. I'm going to add event. And I'm going to search for variable true again. So if variable is true, then I will add an event. And this is pretty cool. This is the, a new feature for GB Studio 4 I'm pretty excited about. Uh, we can go in here and replace tile at position. So if you remember the old way, we used to have to put in a GBVM code and we had to make references to all this. And now it's just a lot more accessible and easier to figure out for this. So to begin with, it asks me what tile I want to replace. I want to replace this one here. So if I push over one and then I push up one to move over here, that's my one one position and it highlights it on there. So I even know which one it's talking about. And that's awesome. And then for the tile set, I can click down on this. And this is why we have to have that folder in there called tile sets, because if it's not there, then it's not going to show up in this option. If you are making your game and you're like, oh man, I just now added that folder and it doesn't show up and you didn't make the proper folder like I showed you earlier, uh, then you might just have to save your progress, close out and then go back in and then it'll show up. That's what happened to me when I did this. Uh, so my little tile sheet is called collections. And then it asks me what tile number I want to choose for this. So if you scroll on this, and this is what I like, it'll show you which of those tiles that it's going to replace it with. One last thing I need to do is click on this, and I need to make sure that I have my art var is the item that is set to true. Now we'll save it. We'll run this. Press return. All right, we go over and we pick up our heart, press return, and we can see that we've replaced that one section of tile with the heart. And it's as easy as that. So now doing the rest of this is just rinse and repeat. We'll go up here to the music note, and we'll give it a collision group of one on collision with player. And then we will deactivate the actor. Activate self, and we will set variable. Here it is, variable set to true. And then we will select one of our global variables for this. 
and then I will rename that variable and I will call this one music var. All right, then we'll go back here to level one. We'll scroll down here and we will add and if variable is true, and we'll click the little drop down menu and we will select music var. Then we will go to deactivate actor and deactivate the actor two in this case, which is my music icon. And then we go down here to the inventory menu. And then I will add another event. If variable is true, click the drop down menu and find music variable. And then add event, replace tile at position. And then this time we'll roll over here to where we're above the two. And you can set yours up to any tiles. And not, obviously, I only have 10 here. You could have as many of those as you want in there. It's just up to you. As long as they're unique, you know, you want them to be unique. And then here I will change this one from 0 to 1. And we'll click Save. Let's give it a test again. Got the music note and the music note showing up there. We'll go over here. And everything is working great. Finally, last but not least, we'll go down here to our health. And we'll give it a collision group of one on collision with player. And we will select here, set variable to true. And we'll click the drop down and we'll choose another one of these global variables. And I will rename it and I will call this one health var. In all reality, health and the heart would be, you know, kind of the same thing. But I I was just trying to think of something quick that I could put this together for, for a demonstration. Uh, we have that on there. And then we will go to deactivate the actor. And we're going to deactivate health. Okay, now go back to level one. Scroll down to the very bottom. If variable is true, then we will click the drop down and we will find health var and we'll add and we will deactivate the actor and then select that health item in there. Okay, now going down here to inventory menu and we will add an event if. Variable is true, and we'll click the drop down menu. And from local, we will select health var and then go to add event, replace the tile at position, and then we will over here do the third one. And I selected the wrong one. Let me fix this real quick. Not heart var, but Health var, there we go. Now let's save it and check and make sure everything's working. Start this up. Okay, we're good there. Pick up the health. It's showing up there, nice. Now we'll go up here to get the heart. The heart is showing up. And our music's showing up. And there it is. So another way to do an inventory slot for your game. Pretty slick and it's using tile swapping and it's even cooler with this replace tile function in GB Studio 4. Let me know if this helps you out. For those of you who are wondering how can I have 10 or more uh, inventory items, this is something you could do. You know, and even another way to do it would be possibly having your inventory items coded up here and then underneath you have a number that goes from zero to one to two to three and then you know you can keep track of your inventory items that way the possibilities are endless i appreciate you all taking the time to watch and hopefully we'll catch you on another video